There is one bigotry that even the ABC will promote without any worry at all about being insensitive. I mean, seriously, who cares? Don't you dare be Catholic in public. And New South Wales Premier Dominic Perrottet is finding that out big time. Now, anti-Catholic hatred is now so out there that the head of clubs New South Wales today attacked Dominic Perrottet for wanting cashless debit cards to protect poker machine addicts. And he said, I think it's fair to say that the Premier has very little understanding of this issue and has acted from his conservative Catholic gut rather than based on evidence. Well, there you have Landis equating being Catholic with being blind to evidence, which is a cheap and nasty shot. And if Catholicism does indeed preach a deep concern for the poor and the weak and the vulnerable, uh, that's a problem how? Now, of course, Landis' own more modern values make him a big fan of gambling and apparently happy to flog some booze as well, which in the hands of the weak, well, that does cause so much havoc. Now, we should be asking, I guess, or maybe we shouldn't, where Landis' own values come from. And Perrottet was, of course, livid with his anti-Catholic abuse. It is incredibly inappropriate um, and offensive to people of faith right across New South Wales uh, uh, in respect to the comments um, that he made today. Uh, those comments aren't an attack on me. Uh, they're an attack on every single person of faith in our state. Um, we live in a tolerant state, a tolerant country, and there, are no, there is no place for comments like that in a modern Australia. Now, Landis has since apologised for that bigotry and has admitted that Perrottet is actually a moral man, which should still be a virtue and not something to mock, particularly in a Christian, I would have thought. But the apology was all too late. Landis was sacked because, yeah, after all, how can he now represent the clubs in a meeting with the same Premier that is a abuser, some sort of anti-rational Catholic loopy? I mean, really... But the fact that it's sacked, I don't know, maybe there is now a fight back against anti-Catholicism. I don't know. Have we, has that rubber band finally been pulled too far? On the other hand, do not expect any apology from the ABC for its latest foul attack on Christianity and on Perite personally last night. What a hit job. And Big surprise. It was again by ABC reporter Louise Milligan, who to me is the ABC's chief anti-Catholic bigot. To be honest, I hoped or thought or maybe hoped more than thought that we'd never hear from Milligan again. I thought that she'd be sacked or that she'd maybe retire in shame. I certainly would have if I'd done what she had. Retire in shame after what she did to Cardinal George Pell in interviews, in documentaries and in books. She falsely painted Cardinal Pell as a pedophile, promoting ludicrous and false claims that he'd raped two boys at once in his cathedral after mass. Now, Milligan helped whip up such a witch hunt against Pell that he was jailed for more than 400 days until the High Court in a unanimous decision, seven judges to nil, Freedom as an innocent man and the victim of, of a miscarriage of justice. Put simply, he could not have been at the scene of the crime, and nor, by the way, could the one accuser. The other boy, allegedly raped by Pell, said he hadn't been. Now, Milligan has never apologised for that, and nor has the ABC. It's there, there she was. There she was on the ABC last night to attack another prominent Catholic Conservative, Premier Dominic Perrottet. Perrottet, she said, and she said it like, this is really sinister, I think they had spooky music, had gone to one of several schools connected to <gasps> Opus Dei, which is a small and very Catholic organisation that the ABC painted last night as a, a hell on earth, would you believe, a hell on earth, even though not a single parent or student has ever complained to authorities about these schools in their entire history over decades. I think a lot of the parents are in the dark about what is happening inside those schools. It is hell on earth. I wouldn't wish it on anyone. 
secrets in the suburbs. Why isn't the public aware of this? Young people are being taught ridiculous things that are unsafe. And who's behind it? Booga, 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 who's behind this? Well, Milligan fixed her sights on Dominic Perrottet, who, totally coincidentally, says the ABC, total coincidence, Perrottet happens to face a very tough election in less than two months. <laughs> what suspicious timing by the ABC, right? And Milligan even went after Perrottet's parents. Premier Perrottet is one of a family of 12 children and his siblings attended Redfield and Tangara. Mr Perrottet's parents are married members of Opus Dei, known as supernumeraries. They appeared on a Compass program in 2000. Opus Dei is often referred to as the work. And I met my husband through, through Opus Dei, and we have a wonderful family uh, because of the encouragement given... We have 12 children, I We do, we do. It's um, quite a big family. It is, and it's been absolutely wonderful. And if it wasn't for the work, I don't know where I would be today. Oh, I noticed that giggling and smirking about the size of Perite's family. Oh, those Catholics. Oh, those Catholics, like rabbits. Well, the ABC's excuse for going after Perite was that some teachers some years ago allegedly warned some students against a then new cervical cancer vaccine. And... They preached some Christian values. And there was an allegation, of, we don't know if there's truth in it, of bullying. Well, the schools say they actually abide by state rules on teaching health messages. And bullying, I think you'll find in every school. It depends on what the schools do about them. And there's an investigation now. And Milligan complained that Opus Dei, and it seemed to be a real complaint, was aggressively targeting young people in the schools. And you've got to think, well, seriously, lady, these are Opus Day schools. Parents send their children there specifically because they like the Opus Day values. And of course, Opus Day promotes itself. And if ABC reporters don't like all of that, then guess what? Don't send your own kids there. Pretty simple. There's not a law saying you've got to send your children to these schools. So why does the ABC insist on imposing their strict values on the rest of us? And why this moral panic? If Dominic Perrottet, a loving family man, very smart financially, as he proved when he was treasurer, tolerant as well, with a very strong social conscience, if Dominic Perrottet, a man like that, is a product of these schools, then maybe they do have something going for them and the ABC should get off their back. But the ABC's hit job was all the excuse that the Greens needed to denounce the school's Christian teachings as antiquated and harmful ideology and to demand that schools get these schools get cut off from government support. And that's, of course, more anti-Catholic bigotry from the Green fanatics. I mean, the Greens are the, the party of these new Puritans at the ABC too. And one last thing. If the ABC is really worried about religious schools, why won't it look at uh, Islamic schools? And if it's really worried about, with schools, about schools where students are aggressively recruited into a cult, why doesn't it report how many students in state schools are aggressively recruited into the global warming cult that leaves some of them crying in fear? What's going to happen to humankind? What's going to happen to our... What's going to happen to the whole world if, if no one does anything? A strange thing, that, that clip there of the crying schoolgirl. That was actually shot by the ABC, except the ABC promotes that global warming cult that filled that poor girl with such terror. The ABC promotes it aggressively, doesn't question it. And I think that's where we get to the real problem the ABC has with Catholics. They don't follow the ABC's green religion instead. 